Hello, my little hypno junkies. Welcome back to more Chaos Head Noah. Well, not much else to say. We are in the finale for the Ayase route. So sit back, relax, hope you watched the previous two parts, and enjoy. Was I dreaming? Even though it had been white only a moment ago, the sky was dyed red. The world itself had turned to a rusty vermilion. This couldn't be real. It had to be just another delusion. Or at least that was what I tried to tell myself. All across the sky I could see clouds upon clouds of black miasma. They seemed almost humanoid in shape. They had to be illusions, though, even if they were unusually vivid. The clouds of haze spontaneously flickered in and out of sight. Even when I thought when it disappeared, it would pop up somewhere else a moment later. The blobs of black miasma were innumerable. Just looking at them made me feel uncomfortable. And there was this intense, rotten-smelling stench. We've somehow managed to teleport ourselves into Song of Saya. It was so bad, it nearly brought me to vomit. I didn't want to be here for even a second longer. That feeling was as strong as could be. Okay. When I came to, the sky had brightened up a little, and Shibuya had transformed into a city of death. A.H. Hospital was still standing, but cracks ran up the wall, and the interior was in complete disarray. I only barely managed to make it out. The entrance to the outpatient clinic was swarmed with ambulances, the place was overflowing with people trampling over each other, fighting for medical attention. When I'd woken up, Ayase had smiled at me and said, Let us return to Shibuya. It had been just before 6 a.m. at that point, which meant that I'd been out for over 10 hours. So this is basically what she did with Yua during the main route. Yua's body was nowhere to be found. I asked Ayase if she knew what happened to it, but she didn't seem to know. Somehow people's bodies just seem to disappear when we claim their D-swords. I don't know what Ayase is doing with them. But we're just going to gloss over the fact that she must have killed Rimi and Nanami. How did she even get to Nanami? I guess we'll run into uh, Senna and Kazapi at some point now. Shibuya was hardly a five-minute train ride from Yoyogi, but due to the earthquake, all public transport was on halt. The railroad had been torn to shreds, meaning there was no way it was going to be restored within the day. So we were forced to walk. Something that was way harder than it sounds. The road was full of holes and rubble from fallen buildings was constantly in our way. It was difficult to even walk in a straight line. As a result, the trip back to Shibuya Station ended up being a three-hour struggle. The surrounding area had been completely annihilated. Almost all of the buildings had collapsed. Countless bodies were strewn out all around us. They were so pitiful I couldn't stand to look at them. There were also a number of people still alive. Some were like us, just wandering around in complete shock while others were crouched by the rubble, waiting for help to arrive. And of course, there were many people clinging on to dead bodies as they bawled their eyes out. Even though they had survived, they all still seemed dead, like the trauma had drained them of every ounce of life they'd once had. The terrible odor of blood and dust filled the air, making even the act of breathing completely unbearable. Was this Gladiol's doing? Was Gladiol the name of the earthquake, maybe? I suppose that would make sense. They always gave their hurricanes names in America, like Andrew or Katrina. Was this how Ayase wanted things to end? Was this the ending she wished to reach? Then again, if you wanted to bring about the apocalypse, this would probably be the best way to do it. But there was no way a single person could cause a catastrophe on this scale, even with the powers of a gigalomaniac or a black knight, as Ayase like to call them. She said that the worlds shall fuse and all shall be consolidated or whatever, but what exactly had she meant by that? While following behind Ayase through the city, I took a peek at the side of her face. This does kind of seem like it's tangentially related to what Nerose wants to do with Noah, because he's technically trying to make everyone happy by letting them be aware of the future or something? I forget the way he worded it or, or what the logic was behind that. I wonder if it uh, parallels what Ayase is saying. It wouldn't surprise me. Unsurprisingly, even Ayase had turned pale when faced with the current state of Shibuya. 
She walked in silence, clenching her jaws if trying to endure an intense pain. Listen up, everyone! This place is dangerous! We all have to hurry to the evacuation site! A middle-aged man in a suit was screaming into the crowd. He was calling out to all the survivors in the area, us included. If you stay here waiting for help, night will hit before you know it. But if you go now, you can make it to the evacuation site before then. Please, don't stay here any longer. Even if it hurts to stand, you've got to get up and get out of here. We've already escaped death once now, and we owe it to the dead to keep on living. Where the hell had that old guy gotten so much energy from? A few people listened and started moving toward him, but most people stayed put. I honestly didn't even look at him. She just kept on moving toward her destination, and I had no choice but to follow. Suddenly, I felt a throbbing pain in my forehead. Ever since we'd left Yoyogi, I'd been getting headaches just like this. Rucksacks? Are we, are we, are we getting rucksacked? Please! Stand up! Why aren't you listening? It's dangerous! You could get crushed by the rubble! I just want all of you to survive! My head hurt. Is the guy yelling at rucksack guy? What the? Suddenly the world was dyed red once more. The sky was covered by vermilion clouds. It was the exact same thing I'd seen in my dream. The asphalt of the road, the concrete of the debris, the buildings, the shattered glass on the ground, the abandoned, broken down cars, the uprooted trees from the sidewalk, all of it had been corroded, overtaken by rust. <laughs> what the hell? Who is that? Maniacal laughter echoed throughout the area. It was coming from the same person who had been trying to get everyone to take refuge just a second ago. His body was covered in a cloud of black miasma. But it wasn't just him. Excluding the dead bodies, there were clouds of miasma around everyone I could see. The hazes were nearly human-sized. They swayed back and forth rhythmically, each one unusually vivid. It was a horrifying sight. It was exactly like in my dream. Ah, <laughs> oh, see, that guy's all happy now. He's okay, he's good. That man's laughter was starting to annoy me. Looking back toward him, I noticed that for some odd reason, he had an assault po rifle pointed straight at me. Well, that's a problem. The police are gone, so I can kill as many people as I want. Well, there's that wicked heartedness. He started spraying bullets. Where do you get an assault rifle from? They don't sell AR-15s in Japan. I immediately hit the ground. I'd been shot, damn. Or so I thought. I had undoubtedly been standing right in his line of fire. But I didn't feel any pain. I lifted up my head to double check. Oh! Please just go to the evacuation site. They have water, food, and blankets too. There's no reason to stay here. He wasn't holding a gun anymore. He was just pleading with the crowd around him. So please, keep on fighting to survive. Don't die in vain. But it all changed so suddenly. Happened again, happened again. What is happening? For a split second, the man's body was covered in static. Before the static, he'd had his hands raised up in the air, but after that, the hand was holding a gun. Doing that so quickly was humanly impossible. It was barely even coherent. It couldn't possibly be real. It was almost like watching a movie with severely jarring jump cuts. <laughs> well, he's happy again. And then he started firing again. The people that were shot fell to the ground, blood spurting everywhere. Their screams echoed through the air. And yet somehow none of the bolts were hitting me. It really felt like I was in a movie. It wasn't real life. Takumi. Takumi? Yeah, pull our boy back to reality. When I heard my name, I came back to my senses. Ayase was staring at me. She looked like she was about to say something. 
But in the end, she didn't. She simply turned her back and kept on walking. Isn't R.D. Sword around here somewhere? I took a look at the sky. It was cloudy, but not red. The surrounding scenery was overcast by a dark gray, no vermilion in sight. The shooter had gone back to pleading with everyone to evacuate. All the people who had been shot were now unharmed, and none of them were engulfed by black miasma. Miasmata. Is that the plural for miasma? Miasmata? I hope I'm saying that right. What the hell had just happened? Another one of my delusions? If it actually had been, then I must have really lost my touch. That delusion hadn't even been slightly realistic. It had been like a movie or a video game or something. Talk to me, hurry. Ayase urged me forward. Where the hell was she going anyway? Was she headed for the evacuation site? The one this guy was yelling about? But if that were true, then she wasn't going the right way. Instead, she went right into the Inakashira line station. What the hell was she think thinking? Wasn't the uh, Inakashira line station where Senna and Kazabi were? Well, she just knows where all the Black Knights are. She's just hunting them down at this point. Oh, maybe we're actually on our way to Noah. There were no staff members at the station, and the trains were all stopped in place. Ayase made her way down the tracks and started walking along them. Naturally, the tunnel was pitch black. It wasn't designed to be traversed on foot at all, after all. It hadn't collapsed yet, but it felt like it was only a matter of time before it did. Yeah, this does not really seem like a safe place to be after an earthquake. I would have never imagined that I'd have ended up walking on railroad tracks like this. What an adventure, though. They should make a movie about it, or a video game. Wait, pretty sure there already was one. Granted, it had come out before I was born, so I obviously hadn't seen it. I just knew it was about some people walking down railroad tracks to find a body. Meanwhile, walking through this underground tunnel wasn't nearly as exciting. If we continued along this route, we'd eventually pass by the Shinzen, Komaba Todaime, Ikeno, and Shimo Kitazawa, Shimo Kitazawa stations. Getting in and out of Shibuya had been made incredibly difficult, so using the subway tunnels was actually a pretty good escape plan. But we had started in Yayogi, and now we were headed towards Shibuya. So something told me that Ayase wasn't using this as an escape route. Uh, no. uh, where are we going? Shinzen Station. What the hell was the point of going there? Maybe she was planning to head to Sume from there, or maybe my base? Maybe Shinzen Station was the place where uh, Kazabi and Senna are. Maybe we were walking back out the way we went during the main path. Actually, I never told her where my base was, so probably not that second one. Speaking of which, I wonder if Saratan had survived. What if the Kurunai Conference Hall had collapsed because of the earthquake? Oh god, all my poor waifus could be buried in rubble! Suddenly, my trivial concerns were interrupted by a bright light. Ah, we are coming out here. There was a railroad crossing right before Shinzen Station, where light from the sky peeked in from above. After the crossing, the rails went into another dark tunnel, and after that was the Shinzen Station platform. So, Sena and Kazabi. The lights at the platform were out, likely due to the earthquake. It was pretty damn dark. There was almost no one around. All I could see were two girls sitting on the platform. Yeah, imagine that. Judging by their uniforms, they were Sumai students. Ayase approached them without a hint of hesitation. Maybe she knew them or something. Oh, so do you. As we got closer, their figures in the darkness became clearer. My brow furrowed. I felt like I had seen them somewhere before, like we had had Crunchy Coons or something. And then I realized exactly who they were. Senna! Kazapi! But something was wrong with them. They should have been able to hear us coming, but they didn't even turn to look at us. No, they just sat there. Their heads looked down at the ground, not moving. Senna? Kazapi? Gladiol's gotten to all the Black Knights before us, including Rimi and Nanami. I tried calling out to them, but the two still didn't respond. What the hell was up with them? The hearts of the Black Knights are soon to perish. So we must retrieve them. The D-Swords. Well, aside from our boy Takumi, we've got them all now. 
Wait. No fucking way. I rushed over to the girls in a panic, then peered into Senna's eyes. <gasps> yes? Senna's eyes were devoid of life. They were completely hollow. With no light left within them, they stared into nothingness. Those sharp eyes of hers, always glaring at everyone and everything, not a single trace of them remained. She was trying to murmur something, but her voice was so incredibly faint, all that came out was a mere croak. I couldn't make out a single word, she said. Kazapi was the same. The light behind her eyes had died out. Her mouth hung open, drool trickling down her cheek. She tried to speak, but her voice was too hoarse to understand. Something had happened to them. What the hell was going on in this city? I was absolutely clueless, so I turned to Ayase for answers. But she didn't seem remotely interested in their fates. Nope, it's time to claim some swords. Their D-swords were lying nearby. Ayase took her own sword and brought it near them. The same shrill sound from before reverberated throughout the station. The three D-swords began to warp and transform. Is this a mechanic that's going to become relevant in the true ending? Yeah, her sword isn't changing. It just looks the same as before. Then came the shockwave, assaulting my body like a fierce gust of wind. And once it passed, Ayase was holding Senna and Kazapi's D-swords. She had all three. She was like Zoro from One Piece. That makes six. Blushing in apparent arousal, Ayase looked at me. She's not blushing from arousal. Takumi, the only one left is yours. You must obtain it. How the hell could she be so calm right now? My frustration was then met by the same throbbing pain in my head as before. Senna? Senna, is this you? Senna, not Senna. Sua, Sua. Sua, is this you? The world turned red once again. Everything became rusting, rotting, and eroding away. We went back to Song of Saya. I could smell a strong odor coming from Kazapi. Kazapi slowly rose up from the ground. Her entire body was dyed red. Was it blood? Or rust? Oh dear! Kazapi's gonna kill you. Kazapi raised her head. Her face was covered by a black miasma. The sheer bloodthirst coming from her was terrifying. Kazapi stretched out her thin arms as if trying to strangle me. But when I blinked, she had somehow ended up back on the ground. Her head hanging downward, she had an indescribable expression on her face. Kazapi's gonna kill you. <laughs> Static rang in my ears, and Kazapi instantly teleported beside me. Well, damn. The black miasma grazed my shoulder. A ghastly cold sent a chill down my spine. Kazapi's gonna kill everybody. You're next, Takumi Shan. Kazapi's mirror will shred you to pieces. Her whispers were emotionless and robotic, but that only made them all the more horrifying. Is Senna going to join you? I blinked once more. Senna's body was slumped over on the ground. She had been cut to pieces. Kazapi violently swung down her arms and stabbed Senna in the head with a shard of glass. Dark blood stained Senna's long, beautiful black hair. Kazapi then raised the piece of glass in the air and stabbed her once more. Static. Now Kazabi was on the ground instead of Senna, and Senna had mounted a homeless man that had appeared out of nowhere. Her head was buried in his shoulder. Her head was moving up and down constantly. What was she doing? Apparently she's eating her dad. Her hair was covering her face, so I couldn't really tell. That is until she finally looked up. The man's shoulder was stained in blood. His flesh was minced like ground beef. And I can even make out a little bit of pink muscle glistening from within. Wait, no. Was it blood? Muscle? Rust? Dav, you taste so good. Oh my goodness. Dad is delicious. Senna finally turned around. And I can now see the blood surrounding her mouth. She was chewing on something. Devouring it. I'm not sure I need a graphic for that. Oh, thank goodness. 
My legs trembled, and the second I lost my balance and collapsed to the ground, the world returned to its original color. My headache vanished, too. I pressed my hand against my forehead and shook my head intensely. I felt extremely sick, like I was about to vomit. It didn't really feel like a panic attack or shock or anything like that. It was more like a poison was slowly trickling through my veins, spreading through my entire body. One that hit me with a horrible, sinking feeling that weighed heavily on my mind. Quick, Ayase, we have to make out some more. I raised my head and looked at Senna and Kazapi. They were still where they were originally, on the ground, motionless. What happened? Ayase held out her hand. It was the same look from earlier, one that told me she had something more to say. I took her hand and stood up from the ground. We gonna explain ourselves? I'm assuming we'll feel better once we get our own sword. We left Senna and Kazapi as they were. I wanted to help them, but I really didn't have the strength to do so, and I also just didn't care in the slightest. We got their swords. Peace out, bitch. We made our way back towards Shibuya Station. On the way, we saw countless wounded people on the ground and just as many dead bodies lying around. Ayase looked up to the sky with her usual distant expression. Trying to stave off my nausea, I asked her a question. What sort of ending are you aiming for here, Ayase? Oh no, she's going to spoil the route. <laughs> ending? Rimi was missing in action. Senna and Kazapi had both had their minds broken, apparently Rimi and Nanami too, although we don't know that. Ayase had already taken the D-Swords from all the Gigalomaniac girls, or maybe stolen would be more appropriate. Again, we have no idea that Nanami and Rimi aren't Gigalomaniacs, so their swords are just there. I still want to know how they got there. She had to have orchestrated all of it. How could she have not? There was no way she just happened to find a bunch of out-for-the-count, mind-broken gigalomaniacs that all had their D-swords out. Again, I'm concerned for Takami. He's going to get his sword, and Ayase's just going to immediately stab him for it. There was just no way. If she was behind it all, then the earthquake was also her doing, and Gladiol was just a legend she'd made up. Can you say for sure that this earthquake isn't your delusion? You wanted this to happen, didn't you? I wonder. Why would you wish for this? Well, we, we really, we know Nizumi is the one responsible for this, really. Do not rush to conclusions, Takumi. All of this was foretold by Ziggler. I only happen to know of it. That is all there is to it. But that Gladiol book has to be a delusion. It's blank. That book doesn't exist anywhere else. But you saw it, Takumi. In my hospital room. It was blank. Yeah, I saw it, but it was completely blank. You were merely unable to read it, Takumi. There's no way it's that simple. You have to be lying. You can't fool me. There are 6.7 billion worlds. As many as there are people. What can be seen in each one differs from world to world. No two can ever be identical. So neither can yours and mine. If that's true, then link me your sources. <laughs> Citation needed. But you can't, can you? Ayase stared at me, then furrowed her brow. She seemed a little perplexed. It was almost like she was forcing herself not to show any emotion. Do you wish to see it? The world that I see? If that's possible, then yeah. Though I doubt I'd believe what you'd show me anyway. You misunderstand, Takumi. You can already see my world. Little by little, you are beginning to synchronize with it. Is is that what she's seeing? Those those images, those hallucinations, the miasmas? The dude with the gun, Kazumi wants to kill everyone. Is that just what Ayase sees all the time? What are... Yep. 
There we go. The world rusted over once more. My gosh, she is living in Song of Saya. Those collapsed on the ground were engulfed by black miasma. I can see the head of a child crushed by the debris poking out through the cracks, and a man who was probably their dad trying to save them. Static rang in my ears again. And then, in an action that was incomprehensible to me, the dad stomped on the child's head. Their head split open like a watermelon and was subsequently crushed by their father's foot. Blood and gray matter splashed onto the ground. The static came again. The child's head was now completely intact. I could hear their dad cry out to them. Hold on, I'll get you out of there. Static. The child had escaped from beneath the rubble and now they were stabbing their father over and over again with a knife. You're fucking useless, you old fuck, they jeered. Brat kid. A young couple was sitting in a somewhat remote spot. The two were under the same blanket, huddled right next to each other. When the static came again, it engulfed the two of them, and the man began to rape her. Her screams echoed loudly throughout the city. But the screams stopped with more sounds of static, and the two were back together as if nothing had happened. Man, I say, no wonder you went crazy. Two middle-aged women were limping down the road. They were likely sisters. Static flashed, and one of them grabbed the other by the hair in an instant. She then began to yank on it in an attempt to uproot it completely. And with the fierce sound of tearing, she mostly succeeded. The static soon flashed again, and her hair was back to normal. What the hell is this? It is my world. It was her world? It wasn't my delusion, but Ayase's? Wait, was it even a delusion? Or was it reality? A black miasma was hovering over Ayase's chest, too. But really, I didn't want to see any of them anymore, so I instinctively looked away. What color is the sky you normally see, Takumi? What do you mean, what color? It's blue. Is that blue? Ayase pointed up to the sky. It was a shade of red. That's... vermilion. Vermilion. So that color is not blue. Ask anyone and they tell you that it's not. Anyone with common sense, that is. But to me, that color is blue. What? What was she saying? Takumi, can you explain to me? What sort of color is blue? Kind of like your hair-ish. I don't know, it's the color of the sky. I mean, not that sky. But that is the only color I've ever seen in the sky. But everyone knows what kind of color blue is. I do not. Please explain it to me. Without an example this time. What sort of color is blue? Without an example, how was I supposed to... I tried thinking of a way to explain it, but I came up empty-handed. I just couldn't come up with a way to describe the color blue. Upon noticing my complete loss for words, Ayase gave me a sad smile. I told you, there are 6.7 billion worlds. Meaning there are 6.7 billion ways of seeing what color the sky is. You cannot assume that everyone sees things the same way you do. Why aren't you synchronizing with us? Our reality is much more pleasant than yours. How come you can't static what we're seeing? The scenery went back to normal. This color was my world's. Ayase, do you always see the world like that? Ayase gave a slight nod. Ever since the day I was born, I thought that was just how things were, how the world was structured. But I suppose I was wrong. Something I only learned when you told me, Takumi. What did we tell her that clued her into that? What's this black miasma? A wicked heart. Everyone has one. 
as long as they are human. Gladio feeds upon those wicked hearts in order to manifest. So you've got a bit of one. Did you see them? The negative delusions of man? Wait, was the static causing negative delusions to bubble to the surface? Was that why I've been seeing all that inhuman savagery? I have always seen them. I am sure all Black Knights can, to varying degrees. Well, that would be news to us. They are home to nothing but true malice, pure, unadulterated desire. I'm trying to remember if there were hints of situations where Takami saw things like that in certain situations, especially near the end of the game. Nothing's coming to mind off the top of my head. Had Ayase been seeing a world like that ever since she was born? Takumi. The ending I wish for is one where we break our souls free from this corroded world. And to do that, we must overthrow Gladio. Ayase moved closer to me. So please, find it. You are our only hope, Takumi. Please, find your D-Sword. How come I'm the only hope? I get one, you get six. Seven if you count that Rimi has two. I can't. Unable to bear it any longer, I pushed Ayase away by her shoulders. Ayase's eyes opened wide in shock. Why? Are you giving up? I'm not this amazing person that you think I am, Ayase. No matter how much I want it, no matter how much I wish for it, it doesn't feel like I'm even getting close to getting a D-Sword. It was the same back at O-Front. And it stayed the same even after the earthquake. I can't figure out how to do it. So I know that I can't. It won't get a D-Sword. I never will. I have no faith in myself. If you can see Yua's, then you can surely see his, right? Because it's not far. Then why did you save me? Ayase drew even closer. I took a step back, trying to stay away from her. What do you mean, saved you? Do you mean the, the flower bed? When I leapt from the school rooftop. You gave birth to a world where there was a flower bed. And that is why I could not ascend my spirit to a higher stage. That was a fluke. I hadn't done it intentionally. But I am fine with that. Because of what you did, I learned of your power. From that moment on, you became my only hope. Please don't place all your hope in someone on a whim. <laughs> Please stop expecting anything from me. Yes, we would never place our uh, hopes in someone on a whim, would we? Ayase, you're my only hope. Nanami's my only hope. Rimi's my only hope. Takumi, you mustn't degrade yourself so. That is merely the wicked-hearted king's invasion of your mental space. You cannot and must not let him win. You are powerful, truly. Come what may, you will obtain your D-Sword. I know you will. I told you it's impossible! I can't! Before I had thought that I might as well just stick with Ayase, I had no one else that could have protected me after all. But the more time we spent together, it became very clear to me. I couldn't understand how Ayase thought at all. The difference in how our minds perceived the world around us was just too great. And if I was being honest, I was fed up with how fucking batshit insane she was. <laughs> she was a complete mental case through and through. Yeah, but you completely forgot about that when she was making out with you, didn't you? I really am a horrible person, and I've always been that way. I'll, I've never changed. How could you say that? Ayase clung to me, tears welling in her eyes. It wasn't the calm, aloof Ayase I was used to. I do not want to stay. In a world like this, any longer. Please, set me free. You are my only hope. You must awaken as a black knight. 
I can't. Yes, you can. Man, that was the most forcefully I've heard her voice actress deliver a line yet. Ah, static again. I synchronized with her world once again. A black miasma poured out of Ayase's chest and entwined itself around my body. It slithered around the top of my skin like an anaconda, slowly strangling its prey to death. Its repulsive, chilling presence was enough to give me goosebumps. It was Ayase's pure, unadulterated desire. I, just like any other person, wasn't used to seeing people's naked emotions. Eek! A flash of static. You are my hope. Ayase stared at me, her eyes dyed pitch black. I will not let you go. You will stay with me, no matter what I must do to meet that end. Ayase's fingers started undoing my jacket buttons one by one. Oh god, she knows your weakness. I want you. She was as close as could possibly be, just like the time we'd made out in the hospital room closet. I was like a deer in the headlights. I couldn't move, exactly. You what ties you down, Ayase just makes out with you. Once she finished undoing all my buttons, my chest was exposed, but she didn't stop, and she kept doing things that I won't repeat. I want your power. Yeah, again, I don't trust Ayase here. She's going to stab us or do something to take our, our sword or our power or something. As soon as we get our sword, Ayase's ice-cold fingertips caressed my chest, and then she stabbed me. Her nails dug into me, yep. The pain was so intense, and yet, I still couldn't move an inch. Uh, I, was, I was stuck in her miasma anaconda. I wanted. Her fingertips gouged out my flesh. They raked their way to my bones. No, 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 I don't want to be in this reality anymore. Her hand reached deep inside, then gently embraced my pounding heart. Oh god, is this what you did to Rimi and Nanami? <laughs> I, I, I take people's power by eating their hearts. It's the heart ripper from Zero Time Dilemma. I was trembling, out of fear, out of pain, out of the cool sensation of Ayase's fingertips. This is less hot than last time. It's so warm. May I have it? <laughs> she really is the heart ripper burger. Jeez. Stop. No, I, I, I need that. I would like that back. That's important to me. I could feel my blood vessels exploding. Copious amounts of blood spilled from my chest. She took it out! My heart! She just... Are we going to go back to normal and everything's fine? Because Ayase... In Ayase's reality, she ate our heart. In this reality, we're just standing here screaming. The world switched colors in an instant. It had gone back to its original dull color. The rust had vanished and I was completely unharmed. I put my hand on my chest. Thankfully, I could feel it beating. My heart was still there. Did Ayase have a different perspective? Yep, no heart for you. Mine. Ayase was standing in front of me, clutching herself with both arms. She looked so incredibly sad, like she was about to burst into tears at any moment. I really wanted that heart. There it was again. The same look as when she had taken Yua's D-sword. Oh my good. She's eating their hearts in her reality. The same as when I had first seen her world back at the Scramble Crossing. The same as when she had obtained Senna and Kazabi's D-Swords. Ayase looked at me on the verge of tears, doing everything she could to hold them back. Talk to me. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, did you not now? My wicked heart spiraled out of control. As did I. Perhaps because I took in too many T-swords. I'm descending into madness, brought forth by the wicked-hearted king's erosion of my mind. Wasn't it all just another one of her delusions? Wasn't it all just fake words meant to trick me? Those thoughts suddenly came to mind, but I didn't say them out loud. I just couldn't. Ayase was a girl who rarely showed any emotion, with her unwavering tone giving her clear command of any conversation she ever had. That was why it was so hard to see her like this. 
I had never seen her so sad before. She looked so fragile, like she could fall apart at even the slightest touch. Because of that, I knew that I couldn't tell her what I was really thinking. Oh, God. You crazy girl! What should I do? When those words left my lips, the slightest of tears began to flow from the corner of her eyes. She turned to me with a gaze that showed how much she truly needed me. I am being subjugated by the wicked hearted king. I had a feeling one of the other outcomes here would be she needs us to get our D sword so she can so we can stab her and take her her swords and, and go fight. Or at least that's what she wants. If nothing is done, I will not be able to remain conscious. Therefore, excise it. Excise the impurity. The erosion of my wicked heart. Okay, do you need us to perform heart surgery or are you just asking us to make out with you again? I, I need specifics. Excise it? How? That's what you need your, your sword for. You saw my world, did you not? That black miasma is the manifestation of the impurity dwelling within people's wicked hearts. Their true malice. Grasp that and uproot it from my body. You want us to tear your heart out. There was no way I could ever, I could never do something so horrifying. Please, talk to me. I want to be myself. Please, rescue me from my world. Why can't you synchronize with our world? Losing her balance, Ayase fell to the ground. Her figure was as frail as could be. But we had made a promise to each other, one she had said herself. I don't remember promising shit. Oh, just I will protect you and please protect me? Okay, fine. I guess so. Now we know where the blood came from. Senna and Kazapi had already been broken, and Rimi was nowhere to be found. I didn't want to lose Ayase, too. There was an element of selfishness to it. But most of all, I wanted to help her. I was fully aware that it wasn't within my ability to do so. But still, even if Ayase really was some crazy, hopelessly schizo girl, even if all this was just her delusion, I wanted to help her with all my heart. I mean, you're in the area of your sword. You kind of need that. But right as I realized that sentiment, the world turned to rust yet again. The snake-shaped black miasma pouring out of Ayase's chest reared its head. Just looking at it made me feel sick. It felt like something was pressing down on my chest and I couldn't look away. But even if I could, it wouldn't change anything. That's why I knew I had to try to face it head on. But I couldn't bear it. It felt like my chest was being crushed. My migraine was splitting my head apart. I couldn't do it. I never could have. I didn't have the strength to help anyone. I looked up in response to Ayase's call. She held her hand out to me, her tear-filled eyes locked with mine. How do I do this without a sword? Come. Do as you wish with me. Why is that the solution? Why is that going to take the black anaconda monster out? I don't, I don't follow. She showed complete trust in me, or perhaps she was depending on me? I'd never had someone depend on me before. My mind was about to crumble, but Ayase's voice just barely managed to keep it together. I bit my lip, and then I took a single, single step toward Ayase. With me as its new prey, Ayase's black miasma moved toward me and entwined itself around my neck. It was so cold it nearly tricked my mind into thinking it was hot. It eased me into its embrace, but all the while it was gently strangling me to death. Ayase leaned against me. Her body had gone completely limp. I was forced to support her entire body weight. So how's this working? Takumi. Takumi. I tightly embraced her slender hips. Are you really sure about 
this. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm sure about this either. I'm not following. I am. With a gulp, I reached my hand toward the black miasma pouring out of her chest. Following only an ephemeral moment, the miasma changed form into that of a black leech, an act that only served to make it all the more repulsive. That was Ayase's wicked heart laid bare, the most hideous part of herself that she didn't want anyone else to see. That was what the mass was, so we're just going to pull it off or what? Well, looks like it. I took hold of the leech's body. It was extremely slippery and it was so cold it stung at my palm. I wanted to let go the second I grabbed it, but in a desperate attempt to hold on, I clenched my teeth and endured it. God, it's got a sick little mouth in the lower left-hand corner there. Yeah, this seems like it would be painful. I say groaned in pain or face a horrid mixture of ecstasy and agony. I don't want to know how this is being depicted in the, in the Takami reality. Pull it out. Take it out! I tried pulling with all my might, but I could feel her flesh being torn apart. Yeah, I'm not sure about this. Black liquid burst from her chest, covering my body from head to toe. Are we actually killing her to set her free, or is this going to be productive in some way? Whether this was blood or something else, I didn't know. Despite all this, I pressed on, pulling on the leech as hard as I could. Uh, are you okay? <laughs> Unable to take her screams any longer, I stopped my hands in place. Hands atop which Ayase had placed her own. <laughs> Do not stop! <laughs> is this an analogy for something happening, or is it... Literal. It's working! Even though her body was drenched in sweat, Ayase firmly reassured me. I couldn't hesitate again. If I did, I'd only be torturing her. Come out! Using every ounce of strength I had, I grabbed, grasped the leech and pulled it out. Really curious how this looks in the other reality. Ayase's body twisted and writhed. The leech slithered around. It was a lot longer than I thought it would be. That's what she said. The leech curled into a circular mass and wrapped itself around my arm. It tightened hard against my fist. I guess it was what it was the wicked heart's last stand. I clenched my teeth to endure the pain. I was glad that I got it off Ayase at least, but I wasn't sure what to do with it now. Pray. Having entrusted her entire body to me, Ayase gently caressed my cheek. And by your hand, the impure wicked heart shall be reborn into one of the purest wickedness. So, like, worse? Or is this where I get my sword from and it's going to be a little different than the other one? The black wicked heart wriggling on my arm suddenly shone violent. A sound burst forth from it, a sound so shrill it was akin to the loudest of screams. That is a D-sword. The wicked heart turned into a sword. I literally pulled my sword out of, out of Ayase's heart. I'd wanted one so bad, but I'd never been able to get one no matter how hard I tried. But now it was firmly in my grasp. Ayase's wicked heart had transformed into a D-sword. Can I get the other one in dual wield? You have finally awakened. Talk to me. Uh, Ayase, you're looking a little bloody there. Even amid her intense pain, Ayase smiled in my arms. Sweat ran down her brow profusely, adhering her bangs to her forehead. Thank you so much for awakening. What had I done to deserve her gratitude? I didn't know. I had no faith in myself. Talk to me. Ayase draped her hands around my neck and then she tightly embraced me. You are the only one 
the only one to ever listen to me. We barely listen to you. To be fair, I'm not sure we ever actually listen to you at all. We've just been following you around like a puppy. We literally ignored when you and you were talking about the stupid Psalms and Revelations things. <laughs> were you listening? Oh yeah, sure, whatever. I'm overjoyed. Truly overjoyed. Ayase's body was really warm. The black liquid on her chest was slowly turning red. Her blood stained my clothes. But I didn't care. I held Ayase tightly in acceptance. She still had trouble breathing. I could feel her back tremble with each breath. The smell of her sweat rose in the air. Even that part of her was as lovely as the rest. <laughs> I love you. Had Ayase fallen in love with me? I may or may not depend on her, but I know she depends on me. So I don't think a relationship like this will be too bad, just the two of us. Don't you guys have to kill a wicked-hearted king god guy? Suddenly the sky behind Ayase's shoulders caught my attention. It was changing from vermilion to black. Is she sinking with us now? But only in a single spot. Or perhaps it was merely an illusion, and in reality the spot was just a star. Nonetheless, the spot gradually grew bigger. If it continued at such a speed, it was soon blank at the entire sky. What is that? I mumbled that to myself, completely dumbfounded. Also noticing the unnatural phenomenon, Ayase quickly stood back up, using my shoulders to help herself do so. That is the awakened, wicked-hearted king. Well, we've got swords now. Is it fight time? His invasion has finally begun. In the end, was I too late? Can I do nothing to stop it? That I cannot accept. Ayase brought forth her D sword, materializing it from empty space. What are you planning to do? What was written in the Gladiol Book of Psalms and Revelations? Why are you asking us? We don't know. Once the seven D swords are gathered, the colossal serpent of darkness shall appear. It is the embodiment of the purity of wicked hearts. A one wicked heart capable of slaughtering another. A being that can devour the corrosion, shatter the wicked hearted king's body, and instill hetero heterogeneity in his hom homogeneity. I, we, I tripped over those words last time. I still don't know how to say them. We must make the colossal serpent appear so that it may overthrow Gladiol. Ayase was still trembling, and yet she readied her D-sword all the same, and closed her eyes the very next moment. It almost seemed like she was meditating. Didn't we summon some sort of colossal serpent thing in the very first ending we got when we destroyed Noah? Is that how this goes down? But even after waiting a moment, nothing happened. Meanwhile, the sky had fully turned black. If I didn't know any better, I would have thought it was nighttime. But no, the sun hadn't set. It was the black ma miasmata, amalgamated into a mist that was spreading across Shibuya. Transforming into a wave, it sought to drown the city in wicked hearts. It slowly crept over the rubble-filled earth, painting every inch it touched black. Silently, it eroded. It swept over our feet. A croak of despair came from my mouth. The corroded world was now rotting away. It decomposed, crumbled, and then it all returned to nothing. People, corpses, and debris alike. Everything slowly melted together. And from the amalgam came an overpowering rotten stench. Uh, I say, uh, can't you do something? Why? Ayase wasn't responding to me. She simply stared at the D-sword she held in her hand, her eyes on the verge of tears. We collected all seven D-swords. So why does it not appear? If left unabated, Gladio will swallow the world whole. Either I'm going to have to kill you or you're going to have to kill me so one of us can have all seven. 
Did I truly have to gather all seven black knights themselves? Yes, yes, you should not have done what you did. Those things. I must have had to follow the prophecy precisely. And I failed. The black wave was growing even faster than before. It had only been up to my ankles a few seconds ago, but now it was already up to my knees. We got the bad end. Strangely enough, I felt some resistance to the flow of it. Did it actually have physical substance? Was it really not just a simple illusion? Filled with horror, a shiver ran down my spine. Shibuya was actually going to rot away. Ayase, just, just come up with a delusion! A delusion that'll defeat Gladiol! Unable to hold it in any longer, I screamed at her, but Ayase just shook her head. The books of Gladiol are not my delusion. Even then, it should be possible for you, or even me, to just distort the prophecy, come up with a new delusion, and make it into reality, right? Isn't that what giggling maniacs, I mean, what black knights do? But, talk to me. Ayase stared my way, her gaze pleading with me. I, I do not know what to do. Oh, God. I was at a loss for words. The world was covered by the black miasma. The sky was pitch black, blocking out any and all light. Not even a single star remained. Are we going to have a bad end with this? And then actually win the fight on the good true end? Is that how that's going to work? The black wave was already up to my hips. It felt like I was going to be washed away by its current any second now. It took everything I had to stay standing. A corpse beside me melted into the liquid and was then swept away by the churning waters. If I let it swallow me up, that was exactly what would happen to me too. The mere thought terrified me so much I wanted to scream at the top of my lungs. What do I do? What the hell do I do? I desperately tried to think of a solution, but I couldn't come up with any. I was no hero, I was just an otaku freak. Yeah, but you gotta draw on the power of God and anime. And even though I'd finally gotten a D-sword, I had no idea how to use it. So that had ended up being just as useless as me. Everyone would be better off if I just died. I should have just get impaled by a bunch of stakes and bleed out. Like in the crucifixion case. Or that one ending with Sua. But right when I thought that, I suddenly remembered something. The songs Fess had written. Their lyrics. Oh? Sing. Sing a song. Despite how it might have sounded, it wasn't something I'd come up with as a last resort. No, I was convinced that it was the best and also only solution I could have ever come up with. Your songs are how you share your delusions with the world, Ayase. And the world she spun with them captivated the youth of Shibuya. The Gladiol saga was a legend of dubious authenticity that might or might not have been true. It could have all just been Ayase's delusion, and she was the only one who had any knowledge of it. But that didn't matter. That legend had been spread to the youth of Shibuya through Phantasm's songs. Therefore, mutual recognition had already been achieved. So sing your heart out. Sing a song to overthrow Gladiolfess. I'm pretty sure I've seen this in an anime before, too. You're telling me to sing? Right now? Didn't you say that guidance appears through song or something? Yes. I did say that. Alright, get singing. It's concert time. And then, I came to meet you at that concert, Takumi. Takumi. Ayase extended her hand to me. I took her hand in my own and squeezed it tightly. Do you like my songs? Takumi? I mean, they're alright. I wonder if they're on YouTube. Sorry, MewTube. I listened to the album I bought from that concert many times. Oh, we get to sing it with her. <laughs> Please don't sing. Your voice is not nearly as good. I'd left the concert early due to my fear of crowds, but she made me want to try again and again and again, however many times it would take. Seeing me not along, Ayase smiled blissfully. Well, if your words are true, then I am not bothered by the idea 
of perishing here. No, no, no. No perishing. More singing. I will sing. Listen well, Takumi. Ayase closed her eyes, took a few moments to focus, before finally letting out a deep breath. Then she opened her eyes. She was no longer Ayase anymore. She was Fess from Phantasm. A contract of blood to seal our sin. Ah, is that the name of the song? Is that why it's the achievement slash uh, story route name? She quietly murmured the song's name, and then she burst in a song. Her voice reverberated toward the pitch black sky. Those seem like lyrics that should be sung right now, yeah. <laughs> We'll just let this go. You can read it yourselves. What effect is this happening? I would like an update, please. Is this summoning a giant serpent? I would like to know. The lyrics were a hint. Ayase, Ayase, strike the stake! This song wasn't prophesying the crucifixion case at all. Combine the seven D swords and drive them into the dark night. There was no doubt in my mind it was a song meant to overthrow Gladiole. A song to release Ayase from her world corroded by rust and red. Destroy your world, Ayase! Ayase stared at me, her eyes burned with a fiery passion. Ayase looked her most beautiful when she was singing. Her energy had completely changed. The damsel in distress from before was nowhere to be seen. Ayase understood what I was trying to say, and without saying a word, she nodded. I poured all my strength into our joined hands. And while desperately fighting against the power of the Black Wave, I entrusted my D-Sword to Ayase. The moment she grabbed it, it was engulfed in red light and swiftly disappeared. But it hadn't been destroyed. As if it had been guided there, the red light was taken in by Ayase's D-Sword. I'm imagining this is all going to combine into a really complicated sword, again, like we saw with Nerose. Are we going to get a Super Mega Sword? We're going to combine like Voltron? Once I knew that for sure, I let go of Ayase's hand. Show me a Super Sword! That's... A cool CG, but not a super sword. Ayase unleashed her power as a black knight. An enormous burst of wind came forth, blasting the world with enough force to make everything around her tremble. The black wave was struck by that pressure, turning into a whirlpool. There wasn't a fragment of her usual indifference in her anymore. Ayase took a stance. She spread her legs, lowered her hips, and held her sword high. Her whole body was overflowing with not just strain, but a strong will. The will to look toward the future. She was just barely able to hold back her urge for pure destruction. She had to wait for the perfect opportunity to unleash it all. The red flicker of the sword grew faster. That sword is that which bends fate to its will. That sword is that which converges all sorrows. That sword is that which interferes with the transcendental plane. Transcendental plane. Fueled by wicked hearts designed to rend others, its edge was doubled. It was the manifestation of all the cries for salvation that arose from Ayase's soul, an embodiment of Ayase's chaotic heart. Ayase's gaze was focused on a single point, the black heavens. The ones that shrouded my blue sky, the ones that shrouded Ayase's red sky. A sky born from all the impurity, dwelling within wicked hearts. One that brought nothing but darkness to the world. The only thing I could do was pray. 
Would the Black Knights triumph or would Gladiol tr prevail? Our fate was resting on Ayase's shoulders. And yet, for some inexplicable reason, I knew. Just as foretold in the legend Ayase had orchestrated, we would never lose to the Wicked Hearted King. So Ayase, strike it. Strike it and pierce through the world itself. Open, oh heaven's gates. See, she had a cool name for her attack. You couldn't come up with one when you needed one, but she's on the ball. Also, why are you gripping it like that? Her entire body curved like a bow being drawn. And then with all the strength vested in her, she cast her shot forth. Is she going to throw her sword like she did at that dude that was attacking Yua? Hey, that's kind of cool. The sword carved a trail of light, blew away the darkness with a loud boom, and pierced through the Vermilion heavens. The text is now an autopilot. It had completely penetrated it. The sky began to crack. The crack spread throughout the entire sky, and before long, accompanied by a flood of sound, the entire world shattered. Is that it? Do I have to click? Aw, oh, you didn't give me a cool shattering movie. Hey, Ayase, that's what blue looks like. Every single person gets, uh, gets their own, uh, or every single ending gets its own theme song. Well, I guess we won. Judging by the other endings, I don't think we're going to get an, an epilogue after the credits. That doesn't seem to happen. So uh, I guess just winner, winner, chicken dinner. And they lived happily ever after. But uh, yeah, the Ayase ending. So now what's going to happen during the true ending? Because I sort of theorized that there was going to be something to do with Gladiol there, but I guess we're just taking care of Gladiol here. Which makes sense. I'm really curious how the uh, really final, actual, true endgame is going to go. Because I have a feeling there are some more plot twists coming. So far, these endings have been relatively straightforward. The Yua one, the twist we saw coming, even though the way we got to it was interesting. This was exactly what we thought it might have been. Us just dealing with Gladiol. Bada bing, bada boom. I still think it was very curious that uh, Ayase apparently took Rimi and Nanami's swords. Like, did they come to her room? Like, how did she get them? We're just going to gloss that over. Non-canon ending. Oh, do we get an epilogue? Do we get more? Yeah, we get more. When I came to. The brilliant light had returned to the world. The sky was blue. I say that's what blue looks like. The color that couldn't be put into words. And yet I knew the sky I was looking at right now was most definitely blue. Gladiola must have been overthrown. Or at the very least, the black miasma plaguing the world had disappeared. And now a warm, soft hand tightly clasped my own. Ayase was standing by my side, looking up to the exact same sky I was. Without saying a word, tears poured from her eyes. You ever see those videos on YouTube where people are colorblind and then some family member gets them those those color blind correcting glasses so that they can see colors they couldn't see before and they just start crying because they've never seen orange and that's probably what Ayase is going through right now oh, yep she gets to see blue to think blue is such a beautiful color you can see it I can't. <laughs> I love her blunt responses. She's never. She never says yes or no. She's just, I can. Yeah. <laughs> I am seeing the same color in the sky as you, Takami. And what a clear color it was. So clear I could feel it in my chest. So clear it almost hurt to look at. 
Did you not know what color your hair was, by the way? Who knew that the sky above was so clear? Before now, I had never once realized. Shibuya was in shambles, transformed into a city of death. Not even a glimmer of its former glory was left in it. And yet Ayase, appearing more dazzling than ever, looked fondly over it all. I could never have imagined the world would be such a beautiful place. Yeah, imagining living in Song of Saya for 18 years and then you finally get to see this. And with those words, Ayase gently clasped my hand. Yay! Ending! Enderunis. A bloody contract for your sins reached Ayase's ending. A contract of blood to seal our sin. Boy, the localization team is different for the game than it is for Steam, I feel like. They're, uh, they're getting a few things a little bit goofy, but that's fine. That's fine. That's cool. So, yeah, that is three. Three down, three to go before we get our actual final, honest-to-God, good ending. So, uh, yeah. Five of nine, 68% achievement rate. We are almost, well... No, we're not almost done. We're half done. We're about half done. <laughs> but that was uh, an interesting one. A little bit more interesting than Yua's, I think. Certainly more interesting than Nanami's. I'm curious about Senna's ending. I'm not totally... I don't know. We'll see how uh, Kazupi's goes. Rimi's could be interesting. We kind of know about Rimi already, but she is sort of the, the unofficial heroine. Even though we've got all these other girls, so I feel like her ending is going to be fairly in-depth. But that was interesting. And again, I feel like we're learning things that are going to be important for the actual final ending. Because again, I don't think the game lets us go to the final ending until we've seen everything else. So, how is this all going to contribute? I guess we'll find out. But thank you for sticking around. That was a longer one. I may actually have to cut this one into three parts. Nanami's I cut in two, Yua's I'm probably going to cut into two, this one I may have to cut into three. But I will see you guys around for the next one, which, uh, it's not going to be Rimi, it's either going to be Senna or Kazupi next, I believe Senna? We'll see. But, uh, yeah, thank you for, uh, sticking with the series, and I hope you're enjoying it, take care, I will see you guys next time, have a great week, I know you will. Bye-bye.